Hey everyone, Kyo here. This is my artist review of the iPad 10 2022. Now this video is going to be quite long, so if you want to save time, you can check out the text review that I have already written on my blog. The link is in the video description below. And on my blog are reviews to other iPads, Samsung tablets, and pen displays as well. Let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a fantastic iPad. It looks good. It has excellent drawing performance, but it's not worth the money when there are other options out there that gives you better value for your money. And by options, I'm referring to the refurbished iPad Air 4 from 2020 and the iPad Pro from 2020 as well. Let me show you where you can find the refurbished iPads that are sold by Apple on Apple's website. Just scroll down to the bottom of the page, click on refurbished and clearance. Now this iPad 10 is priced at 449 US dollars and that is for the model that comes with 64 gigs of storage. Let's tap on the iPad here and see what options we have. And let's look at the iPad Air. So if you are going to spend 449 US dollars for iPad 10, why not just go with the refurbished iPad Air? This design looks identical, almost identical to the iPad 10, but this has a better display and supports Apple Pencil 2 where you can snap to the side of the iPad for charging and for pairing. And this is obviously the better iPad for your money. And if you want to increase the storage to 256 gigabytes, it's 600 US dollars. The same price as the iPad 10 with 256 gigabytes. So I'm not sure why or what's the reason for buying the iPad 10. Let's look at the iPad Pro 11 inch. Don't go with the model that has the single camera, go with the model from 2020, the one with the squarish camera module. So for 549 US dollars, you get 128 gigabytes of storage, which is all right. But if you want to upgrade to 256 gigs of storage, let's take a look. It's $619, so it's just $20 more compared to the iPad 10, 256 gigs model. So this is an even better iPad compared to the iPad Air that I was talking about. So these two options are better options than the iPad 10. So I'm just, I'm just not um, seeing the value with the new iPad 10. There are many who watch my videos who will say that it's not fair to compare new products to old products or even refurbished products. Well, the iPad 10 is not exactly new either. It's using the A14 chip from two years ago. It's using this design which was used by the iPad Pro when it was released in 2018. That's four years ago. It's using Apple Pencil 1 which was released when it was first released many years ago. And it's still using the, hear this, hear the whole sound. It's still using the laminated display from many years ago. So this is a new iPad, but in essence, it's not really a new iPad. For me, it's just a repackaged iPad Air 4 from 2020. I guess you can tell from my tone that I'm not particularly excited about this iPad. This is not something I would recommend upgrading to. And this is not something I would recommend if you are thinking of buying your first iPad. I would recommend you go with the refurbished iPad Air 4 from 2020 or the refurbished iPad Pro 11 inch from 2020. Both will provide you with more value, more features, and both are much better iPads compared to this. And if you think the old way of charging Apple Pencil by connecting it to the lightning port of the iPad looks silly, well, it's even more silly now. Now you have to use this USB-C to lightning adapter, connect it to the cable, and connect your Apple Pencil this way 
to your iPad for charging and for pairing. This is actually not too bad. It's just that if your Apple Pencil runs out of battery while you are outdoors and you don't have the adapter and you don't have the cable, there is no way to charge the Apple Pencil. Oh, oh, wait. If you happen to have an iPhone, you can actually charge the Apple Pencil with it by connecting it to the lightning port and this battery icon will update to tell you it's charging. So is this the Apple ecosystem everyone is talking about? And now on to the full review. Let's take a look at the items included in the box. Apple Pencil 1, by the way, is sold separately for US $99. So in the box, there is a braided USB-C to USB-C charging cable, a USB-C charger, quick start guide and two Apple stickers. And inside the Apple Pencil box, there is a quick start guide, the Apple Pencil, a USB-C to lightning adapter, a lightning to lightning adapter, and one extra replacement pen tip. If you buy the Apple Pencil 1 directly from Apple today, they will include the lightning to USB-C adapter. If you already have the Apple Pencil 1, you have to buy this thing separately and this is US $9. Design of the entry-level iPad has finally been updated to the same design aesthetics used by the current iPad mini, iPad Air and iPad Pro. So we have the rounded corners on the metal frame, the rounded corners for the LCD and this is quite thin. This is 7mm and on this side we have two buttons for volume controls. Here we have two sets of speaker grills, but the audio is only coming out from the bottom set. This is the power button with fingerprint sensor built in, which is quite fast and effective. On this side, we have the connectors for the keyboard folio. And here we have two more sets of speaker grills. Again, the audio is only coming out from the bottom set when you're holding the iPad horizontally. That's the USB-C charging port with USB 2 transfer speed, so that's kind of slow. This iPad is available in four colors, yellow, blue, pink, and silver, which reminds me of print colors, CMYK, and the color is quite intense. The USB-C connector and the inner walls are also yellow. There is no keyboard connector here. This single camera is a 12 megapixel f1.8, and the image quality is actually pretty good. If you are watching shows while holding your iPad this way, make sure you don't block the speakers at the bottom. The audio quality is good, it's loud and it's clear. This iPad weighs 477 grams. The LTE model is slightly heavier. This is what I would consider to be lightweight and even if you add a case on it, it's still quite manageable to hold in one hand while you draw. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a landscape camera here. Perhaps that's the reason why you cannot use Apple Pencil 2 with this iPad. Build quality of this iPad is solid and this tablet feels premium. Now Apple's attention to detail is on another level, which can be seen as a good or bad thing. For example, this keyboard connector has moved from the back here down to the bottom side. So the keyboard cases and folios made for the iPad Air 4 and 5 are not compatible with this iPad. And even though this design looks like the iPad Air 4 and 5 or the 11 inch iPad Pro, the dimensions is not exactly the same as those iPad Airs and iPad Pros, which is to say that you will not be able to use or reuse those cases made for those iPads with this. That's how much attention Apple gives to the design so that they can sell you accessories, overpriced accessories that are made specially for this iPad, such as this keyboard folio thing that is US $249. Let's talk about the display. So this is a 10.9 inch IPS LCD with LED backlight. The resolution is 2360 by 1640. Pixel density is 264 ppi. All the visuals look sharp with no noticeable pixelation. Color support is sRGB instead of P3 which has a wider color space but that's alright because the colors still look good out of the box. Brightness is up to 500 nits so this display is quite bright 
and there is true tone technology so the white looks more natural. iPad 10 does not have any anti-reflective coating on it so reflections are going to look more glaring compared to iPads that have anti-reflective coating on them. This display is not laminated so there is a gap between the glass, the drawing surface and the LCD beneath. This doesn't really affect drawing performance though. Apple Pencil tracking is still very accurate. The line will always appear directly beneath the pen tip. There is no parallax. Anyway, parallax doesn't really affect non-laminated displays which are smaller in size. So Apple Pencil is still very accurate on this display. It's just that when you have an air gap between the drawing surface and the LCD, it makes this hollow tapping sound. And this is how it sounds on an iPad Pro. The sound is not as hollow, so this feels denser. And also with the anti-reflective coating, I feel like there is slightly more resistance when I'm drawing on this display versus the iPad 10 display with no anti-reflective coating. Both Apple Pencil 1 and 2 are sensitive and accurate pens but the drawing experience on a laminated display just feels more satisfying, that's all. There are a few things you need to know about Apple Pencil 1. This design is cylindrical, so it rolls very easily. So make sure it doesn't roll off the table. My old Apple Pencil 1 has rolled off the table several times and it's quite scary because this is 99 US dollars. If it breaks, you have to buy a new one. And make sure you don't lose the cap because it can roll off very easily as well. So Apple Pencil 1 still uses the lightning port for charging and pairing. When you buy Apple Pencil 1 today, make sure it's listed to include the lightning to USB-C adapter because the older Apple Pencil 1s do not include this. And if you buy this separately, it's US $90. So to charge and pair the Apple Pencil 1 with the new iPad, you have to connect this to the lightning port of the Apple Pencil, connect this USB-C cable and connect this to the iPad. So this is obviously not an elegant way to charge Apple Pencil but it's still alright if you are charging Apple Pencil at home. If you want to charge this outdoors, it means you have to bring along the adapter and the cable. With the older design, battery life isn't something I used to worry about because you can just connect Apple Pencil directly to the iPad for charging. But now, if you do not want to charge the Apple Pencil while you're outdoors because you don't want to bring these extra accessories outdoors, you have to make sure the Apple Pencil is fully charged. And the battery life for this when it's fully charged is 12 hours. If you happen to have an iPhone, it is possible to charge Apple Pencil this way. 15 seconds of charging will give you 30 minutes of use. If you are thinking of getting an iPad for drawing, for creating art, that's great because there is a huge variety of high quality drawing apps available from the Apple App Store. And these are just some of the many out there. And there are also many wonderful graphic design apps available. And by graphic design apps, I'm referring to apps that can handle layout, text, and can create vector graphics. So these are some options. Drawing performance of the Apple Pencil has been amazing ever since the Apple Pencil existed. Initial activation force is very low, so you can draw lines even if you don't apply any pressure. As long as the pen tape is touching the display, you can get very thin lines. And this is how thick the line really is. You can get very beautiful tapered strokes. You may notice some latency. That's due to the app as well as the 60 hertz refresh rate of the LCD. But it's not really an issue that affects drawing accuracy. Anyway, when you're drawing, you are usually not drawing long sweeping lines like this. And this latency actually affects 
writing more than drawing because when you're writing you want to write fast and that's where you can see the latency that's where you can see the line trying to catch up with the pen tip but when you are drawing usually you're drawing at normal speed latency is not really noticeable or something that you pay attention to unless you are looking out for it there is perfect palm rejection so if i draw or write with my finger or place my palm on the display nothing will happen i will not be able to introduce any stray strokes even if i want to palm rejection will depend on how the app implements palm rejection because certain apps may not provide palm rejection but by default the palm rejection provided by apple pencil works great let me show you tilt sensitivity so here i'm using a brush that reacts to tilt i can vary the pressure and this is the thickest line i can get with pressure and when i use tilt i can get an even broader stroke and the transition from thin to the broader tilt stroke is very smooth and dots like this can be drawn easily my drawing experience with apple pencil is very positive the lines always come out exactly the way I expect them to. So drawing performance is very predictable, very consistent. I just don't like the hollow tapping sound. This 10.9 inch display is a good size to work with for drawing. And this drawing surface area is about the size of an A5 sketchbook, except it's slightly wider here. And when you have apps that have lots of user interface elements, for example, Clip Studio, you still get a good amount of canvas space to work with, even with palettes on the left and right side. If I have to draw for long periods of time, I will have the tablet on a tablet stand instead of having it flat on the table. Drawing on a tablet stand is way more comfortable and better for my posture as well. And notice how reflective the display is. So if you have lights that are pointed directly on the display, um, those reflections can be quite glaring. For the type of art that I create, which is mostly line art with very simple coloring, I don't use too many layers. I usually don't use more than 20 layers when I'm drawing with Procreate. And these are the number of layers you can get with Procreate with the various iPad models when you're trying to create a custom A4 size canvas with 300 dpi resolution. This tablet has good battery life. If you use auto brightness, you can get around 9 to 10 hours of usage. If you use maximum brightness, you can get maybe 6 plus hours. These are quick sketches of my daughter who is now 4 years old using the app concepts i remember drawing her using an older ipad the ipad 6 when she was first born now this ipad 10 is a much better tablet compared to the older ipads in terms of design the look and the feel the drawing performance is the same as before, so it's mostly the views um, that you will get with the new iPad. As much as I enjoy drawing on this iPad 10, I just can't recommend this when I know there are better options out there. So I highly recommend you go with the refurbished iPad Air 4 from 2020 or the refurbished iPad Pro 11 inch from 2020 both are just much better iPads compared to the iPad 10. Many will say it's not fair to compare the new product with older products or refurbished products. Uh, I mean older or refurbished products are supposed to be cheaper and in a few months time you may be able to get the ipad 10 at a lower price but even if you can get the ipad 10 at a lower price the older models the refurbished models in my opinion still provides more value for your money because again they are just better ipads i mean the displays that you get with the ipad air and the ipad pro are going to be laminated 
they have the anti-reflective coating so they will give you slightly more resistance while you draw the overall drawing experience is just much better and you can attach a pencil to the side here for charging and pairing you don't have to charge this the cd way by connecting the cable and lightning adapter it's unnecessary the last thing I want to say is I no longer use a matte screen protector but if you want to use a matte screen protector on your iPad to get that tactile drawing experience I recommend you go with this brand called Super Shoes which you can find on Amazon I'm not sponsored by the company I'm recommending that because it's just US $10 and you get 3 pieces and if you find out that you don't like how the matte screen protector affects the image quality of the display you can just discard that without losing too much money to conclude this ipad is really good just that for me it doesn't provide value for money when you consider other options out there so it's not worth the money for me but it may be worth the money for you and one thing you need to know is the base model only comes with 64 gigs of storage and that's priced at us 450 dollars 64 gigs of storage nowadays isn't really enough for creating artworks or graphic design iPad OS takes up 15 gigs of storage so you are actually left with 39 gigs of storage effectively before you install any apps so chances are you may feel the need to upgrade to 256 gigs of storage in which case it's US $600 plus $99 for the Apple Pencil so that's $700 US dollars if you don't feel like spending so much money Apple is still selling the previous model the iPad 9 at the original price but I kind of feel bad to recommend this iPad because it was a really outdated the day it came out last year so now it's even more outdated but at least it's much cheaper and sometimes you can find this at 50 or 100 dollars off on amazon usa all right before you go i just want to let you know that you can find more reviews of art related tech products such as tablets tablet stands pen tablets and pen displays on my blog the links are in the video description below and if you have intention to buy this tablet or some other tablets consider using the affiliate links that I have for you to support my YouTube channel. I earn some commission for each sale, but at no extra cost to you. All right, I hope this review is useful. See you guys again. Bye.